that we used to work in. But notice how we can't go into the room. We can only observe it from afar. There are most likely really bad memories associated with that office, and it could symbolize that no matter what, we can't change what happened in our past. We can only look back and remain haunted by the terrible atrocities that occurred. And unfortunately, there's no peace for the player as we constantly keep seeing messages indicating that we are unwanted. For example, Dog Day's cardboard cutout says that we can't be here and we can't stay. You can't be here. You can't stay. So we definitely had a job that was closely linked to the experiments and suffering of the children. Another piece of evidence to back this up is after we get ambushed by catnap in the counselor's office. We then go through a hallucination in which we are seen amongst the children at home sweet home, the school, the playhouse, and the counselor's office. So we can assume that we worked in close proximity with the orphans. We understood them, how they play with each other, learn new information, and lived as children. But what was our job specifically? Many have already theorized that the player is actually head of production. In chapter 2, we're able to see the higher up tunnels, which were slides that had the names of important employees like Elliot Ludwig and Leith Pierre. However, the fifth slide has decaying letters that are hard to see, so it's speculated that this has our name on it since it's connected to the production room right above the tunnels. Usually, the head of production is someone who is in charge of controlling and planning all processes that have to do with manufacturing. So if we're the head of production, we could have been involved in the toy development process and it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that this role overlapped with the bigger body's initiative. Plus, we seem pretty handy with the grab pack, so it makes sense if we were in the production world, as we may have even been involved in establishing the product. The only thing that contradicts this theory is our alleged office in chapter 3. If we're the head of production, then why would our office be in the orphanage? It's safe to assume that the head's office would be somewhere else on the main facility. If our office is in home sweet home, then there's a few possible jobs that we could have. The one that stands out the most would be the researcher. Throughout the orphanage, we see observatory rooms rooms with one-way glass windows looking into the rooms of the children. Perhaps we were gathering information on the orphans and their behaviors, but we still only have parts of the puzzle completed. Another theory suggests that the main character is actually Rich, an employee at Playtime who's known for having anger issues. Rich is a somewhat random character that doesn't seem to fit in the main storyline of Poppy Playtime. He is featured in every chapter, and in chapter Chapter 3, he has the chance of getting promoted. Because of the fact that Rich was an employee who has constant cameos in the game, people have speculated that he is the player. While we don't know what Rich's actual role in the company was, we do know that he worked in shipping, as stated in Chapter 3. But Rich doesn't have much intel as the main character. In that VHS tape, when speaking to his superior, he says this. I mean, don't you think these kids deserve some real sunlight instead of floodlights and painted skies? Hell, we're not even allowed to talk to these kids. Rich doesn't know or understand why the orphans are so isolated from the rest of the world, so he probably doesn't know about the experimentation happening. There's no evidence to support that he worked with the children in any capacity. So where does this leave us? Let's draw our attention back to home sweet home. In the hallucination, we come across a radio that has backwards speech, but reversed, this is what it says. You come in here and you kill and destroy. Your presence was demanded 10 years ago and you didn't show up. 8 8 1995. You were supposed to be here. Why weren't you here? You missed the event. You missed the meeting. You missed the party. You have no right to be here. When hearing this for the first time, it sounds like the guilt of the player coming back to haunt us. We had missed the hour of joy and all of our co-workers ended up dead. And to a large extent, this still checks out, but something about the dialogue is just off. Let's go line by line. You come in here and you kill and murder. This could be used to describe the atrocities that we committed while working at playtime. 
possibly giving the green light for experiments to proceed or even participating in them ourselves. But this sentence is in the present tense. It refers to us right now as we return to the factory. Kill and murder alludes to us defeating Huggy and Mommy in the previous chapters. Pillage and destroy refers to us tearing down Playtime Co. after we came back, i.e. crashing the train at Playcare and causing a huge fire. But how do we know for sure that this first line is in the present tense? Well, because the second line uses the word demanded, which is in the past tense. In other words, the speaker is basically saying, how dare you come back to Playtime Co. when you failed to arrive at a time when your presence was needed a decade ago. Speaking of, the next line refers to us being absent during the Hour of Joy, so maybe the player is going through some survival guilt. After all, the people we worked with have been killed while we stayed alive, but there's a problem with this. At this point, the player isn't supposed to know that the Hour of Joy even happened. Throughout the game, Poppy says things like, you deserve to know the truth, and she shows us the Hour of Joy VHS as a giant reveal, implying that we had no previous knowledge of the event. But if we heard this tape in Home Sweet Home mention the Hour of Joy before Poppy told us, then how would we know? Maybe we already had a hand in it. Moving on to the next two lines. You were supposed to be here. Why weren't you here? Now, this could once again just be the player's guilt talking. We were supposed to die on that day since we were an employee. What makes us so special that we deserve to live and everyone else didn't? But this line could also mean something else when paired in conjunction with the next sentence. You missed the event. You missed the meeting. You missed the party. Event, meeting, and party. These are all different words with drastically different meanings. Sure, the word event could refer to the hour of joy, but a meeting? What meeting could we have possibly missed? This tells us that something was being planned and we were a part of it. On the same day as the hour of joy, the player and some other characters were going to do something. If this tape represents a playtime co-worker speaking to us, then the meeting could refer to anything work related. But what if it's referring to participating in the hour of joy? This theory already sounds pretty crazy, but consider this line you missed the party. This is very strange because why would the hour of joy be referred to as a party when it was in fact the very opposite? The only characters that would refer to this massacre as a party are the toys who planned it all along. So what if we were actually helping the prototype carry out the hour of joy? If you think it's too crazy that employees actually sided with the prototype, then think again. Let's recall back to the restricted relocation VHS tape. Mob published this video on YouTube almost a year before chapter 3 came out. This video took place on the same day as the Hour of Joy, and it was an instruction video on how to relocate a bigger body. Here, Kissy Missy is the prime subject, being transported to a different parts of the facility. The video is separated into multiple steps. Step 1. Retrieve body. Step 2. Safely secure giant. Step 3. Load giant onto train. But step 4 is where things get weird. The original instructions refer to the bigger body's handbook, but over those instructions in red letters are the words, loosen the straps, binding the giant. Soon after, steps 6 and 7 say to release the straps. Now, VHS tapes are pretty ancient, and nobody really knows how they work anymore. But the important thing to know is videos on a tape can be overwritten with new images. Now, because this tape is classified only for high clearance playtime employees, then it definitely didn't fall into the wrong hands. Perhaps a playtime co-employee did this on purpose, or even gave the exclusive tape to a toy so that it could be tampered with. But why would employees want to help the prototype? First, it's important to note the possibility that these employees weren't completely aware of the chaos that would ensue. They could have been used as mere pawns to help jumpstart the Hour of Joy. Perhaps they felt immense guilt about the work they were doing and thought they could redeem themselves by helping the toys. 
So could we have also fallen into this category? Whether we were the head of production or a researcher in the orphanage, we knew of the atrocities that were happening and needed to do something about it. Somehow, we heard news of employees going rogue and communicating with the prototype. Possibly doing some good, the prototype could have manipulated employees by advertising the hour of joy as a happy occasion in which everybody could finally be free. But somehow, we ended up learning about what would happen on August 8th, 1995, and we changed our minds, backing out of any plan we had agreed to. Perhaps the guilt isn't just about what happened to the kids, but also about how we knew hundreds of innocent employees would get their lives taken that day and we let it happen notice that the notes we receive in chapter one says that the staff are still here not the children this is what made us want to right our wrongs the guilt was doubled and too much for us to bear poppy says in our hallucination this isn't a place you come back from so we knew that there was a good chance we wouldn't make it back out alive. This was a dangerous mission, but we still proceeded. So what did we do? During the hour of joy, did we just stay home and do nothing? Maybe, but that doesn't seem right. What if we actually were present on that day, but just failed to play our role, whatever it was? In the hallucination we experience in the counselor's office, we end the sequence standing in the room where we first met Huggy Wuggy in chapter 1, except he's gone. All that we see is an empty room bathing in red light. That is, until the metal hand of the prototype slowly inches towards us. We can also hear the sound of an emergency alarm and people screaming. Could this be us reliving a moment of the hour of joy? Now, of course, since since this isn't real, you can just say that we made it all up in our head. But so far, all of our gas-induced hallucinations had ties to our past and took real elements out of it. So who's to say that this wasn't just a memory? But even still, proving that the player had something to do with the hour of joy is a tough task as there isn't enough evidence to fully imply anything. But what do you think our role was in Poppy Playtime? Let me know down in the comments. Comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here. English or Spanish? Whoever moves first is gay. Oh, no.